Hi, and welcome to your weekly bonus corner, Spatey. Uh, it is Yulia and myself, and we are joined with a very special guest, uh, economist. Uh, I know you don't like being called a politician. You did that for a little while. That was a little stint. Um, uh, uh, activist, uh, political thinker, uh, uh, Janos Varoufakis, uh, writer. I don't know what else to add to your to your to your. Um, you know, biography, but it is, uh, it, it is great to have you here with us today. Thank you so much for coming onto the show. It's a great pleasure. It's very good to be with you. Um, so I thought that, um, because Giannis normally gets interviews about the economy, about Europe, about this, about that. I thought that we would have Giannis on to discuss something completely different, uh, a little bit, something more heady, if, if, if you will, uh, possibly, uh, you know, inspirational, dare I say, of um, last year, uh, um, November 17th, marked the 50th anniversary of the student uh, protests in Greece that eventually brought down the, uh, the leader, uh, the, the, the regime of the colonels that it is called in English. We can just call it what it was, a fascist dictatorship, uh, one of the most brutal uh, 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 CIA-backed dictatorships of the Cold War. And um, the thing that I always kind of found very interesting with this moment is that then it kind of sets Greece onto a very, um, you know, interesting position currently that it currently is in this 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 version of the Hellenic Republic that we are in. And the reason why I thought it'd be interesting to have Giannis on to talk about this is one, you are, you know, from Greece, you've grown up in this kind of political milieu post uh, um uh, uh, post dictatorship, but uh, first and foremost, um, as, as as well before getting into it, also um, uh, this moment to me, I, I think, is also while it's not like a, a massive victory uh, for the left, it does kind of I think serve with how things are looking today, where it feels very glum and everything kind of seems that we are having fascism on the rise uh, in Europe, or fascism already fascism already being here, depending on your position. Um, this moment kind of serves in a period where a lot of similarities, I think, are happening historically, where fascism is having a lot of wins and whatnot, and there's a pushback. And it doesn't end up with us necessarily in socialism, but there is like a brief moment where we have something that we can kind of grasp on. And that's why I thought that you'd be a good person to have on to the show to talk about this as kind of more of a, of, of, of a theoretical discussion, if you will, um, on, you know, this moment and what it means for the left. But further, uh, regardless of the conversation that we're going to be having later, um, what is your personal connection to then this moment in Greek history, uh, 1973, 1974? I know that you were, you were probably quite young at this time, but what is your personal, um, like takeaway from all this? Uh, uh, when you were a child, like what political awakening did it have, or what do you remember? Almost everything. My life was marked by that experience. I was young, as you said, but um, the ferocity of the events was such that uh, they will be forever imprinted in my mind. Uh, I am a creature that was born uh, as a result of this fascist dictatorship. Uh, I was uh, six years old when in the middle of the night, four o'clock in the morning of the 21st of April, 1967, uh, I remember it as if it was yesterday, the secret police broke down our doors, uh, uh, both doors, <laughs> kitchen door and main door, and they uh, abducted my father for two weeks. So when that happens to you as a six-year-old, you don't forget that, right? A um, couple of years later, uh, I remember my mother taking me in a taxi to a hotel in the north northern parts of Athens, to visit her brother, my favorite uncle, who had just been, uh, uh, he had just spent eight months of being tortured by the secret police. And I was the first person that I was allowed to see. You know, I was eight, unforgettable experience of being surrounded by effectively the Gestapo, the Greek Gestapo, and they looked like it. And it was very interesting because he, um, he, he was an engineer. He had made out of matches and cardboard pieces and, you know, cigarette paper. He'd made uh, a model airplane. I was an eight year old boy, right? For me, uh, while incarcerated. And um, he made sure that it looked like um, a Stuka, um, a Luftwaffe Stuka, because he, he knew that his guards were Nazis and therefore they would appreciate it and would let me have it. And inside that Stuka, there was um, a message for his comrades back outside of the resistance. So, you know, when you experience that at the age of eight, Huh? 
and so by the time the uh, polytechnic uprising took place in 1973 uh, I, was, um, I was I was an old man <laughs> following all these experiences I'm joking but you know what I mean I remember it vividly I remember the day after not the day after the the crashing of the of the students took place on a Friday night and I remember there was of course military martial law after that and Monday morning um, uh, I went in I took the school bus um, to go to school and, uh, you know, we were driving through a desolated Athens with tanks and military vehicles all over the place, uh, no pedestrians, um, people were scared, they were uh, cooped up inside. And um, I remember going to school and the headmaster uh, risked his life by giving a fiery speech about democracy and about the, the young people in the Polytechnic having done us proud, which was, you know, really very um, courageous of him to have done that because they were kids in my school, whose, um, it was a private school, whose uh, fathers, um, not mothers, but fathers were part of the regime. So all that, I'm telling you all this, I don't know what came over me, but um, you inspired me to, you know, to share the, the, the very vivid memories. You see, people ask me, how did, was I politicized? Well, by stealth from a very young age, even though I studied mathematics and I went on to do very abstract stuff. Uh, once you've had that kind of uh, upbringing, then it is impossible not to see the politics in everything you do. I also find that very interesting because I feel like that still it is a big leg legacy for the Greek left in general. Uh, I mean, as far as I know, even though the anarchists, for example, weren't that influential during that uh, specific historical uprising, it um, still has a big influence on them, on Greek anarchism as well, with the chants like Brett, education, liberty is the chant as far as I know. And sure. also... Yep. And also like groups like like the revolutionary organization of the 17th of November, there is like a lot of of like remembrance in in progressive and leftist forces or radical forces in Greece. But uh, yeah, to the question now, um, how is this um, kind of like um, this specific historical moment that then leads to the fail of the tyrannic regime of the junta um, post-1974 viewed uh, between um, leftist movements back then who began the protest, the general Greek civil society back then, but also specifically um, today and how um, has it influenced the remembrance of this historical moment in um, Greek culture and Greek society? That rupture of the Athens Polytechnic was uh, crucial in shaping um, everything since then in Greece. It was, by the way, it's important to put it in its context. Even though there was resistance, there were people in jail, were being tortured, and there were some very, very brave souls. And the majority of the Greeks didn't um, uh, consent to their reconciliation by the fascists. Nevertheless, there was complicity. Uh, back in the early 70s, uh, the football stadia were full of people cheering football teams. Uh, there were celebrations, there were, you, you know, if you walked around Greece in during that period, you saw very little resistance. There was um, uh, tacit acceptance, no love for the regime. No support for the regime, but tacit acceptance of the regime, and quite a lot of people made a lot of money and didn't resist. The vast majority did not resist. In a sense, the students of the Athens Polytechnic redeemed Greek democracy. They cleansed our collective conscience by standing up. Had they not stood up, then uh, um, most of us would be hanging our heads in shame that we didn't resist as we should have done. Uh, having said that, after 1974 and the collapse of the junta, uh, which was partly due to the Athens Polytechnic rising, not fully, but partly due to it, uh, the process of 
sullying the memory of that outbreak of um, resistance began. Uh, a number of the protagonists of that uh, magnificent rebellion by the students became co-opted into the system. They became members of parliament, some of them became ministers, and they started legitimizing the um, conservative turn, effectively the selling out of the rebellion. So in the first few years after the junta, every 17th of November, we had 800,000, 900,000 people on the streets marching to celebrate the memory of the Polytechnic. From the 19, mid 1980s, especially the early 1990s onwards, that dwindled into uh, a trickle of demonstrators, and most of them were not representative of the vast uh, majority of progressives around Greece. So the memory of and the commemoration of the Polytechnic starts fading and starts becoming um, the property of sectarians as opposed to uh, the broad mass movement. Uh, and it is interesting that every time there is a spasm against the oligarchy, um, like for instance, uh, last year when uh, there were thousands of hundreds of thousands of young people demonstrating against the death, the quasi murder of uh, 57 young people in a train crash, which is a result of a botched privatization of the big railways. Uh, a lot of them went to the Polytechnic. And the Polytechnic um, commemoration event that followed was again populous. So it's latent. It has been partly um, erased. It has been partly commercialized. It's been partly usurped by very conservative forces that have uh, tried to exploit it, and some of them successfully. Um, often the commemoration of the Polytechnic is an embarrassment because it is so sparse and so pathetic in many ways, but it's always there. It's always a memory of a possibility, which is not to be scoffed at. It's not a, a small thing to have. Exactly on that note was something that then I wanted to slightly begin transitioning over to the modern era of not even just Greece, but just of where we kind of stand um, as the left uh, um, or progressives or whatever you want to call yourself. You know, uh, 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 we're not we're not we're not ideologues here. At least I hope that we're not um, is uh, exactly then this like while still keeping it internally within Greece is um, the laws regarding like one perfect example in the news that then I think a lot of people outside of Greece have not been realizing has been the reforms from the Mitsotakis government regarding police on campuses and such that that was instituted after the um, like af af after the Polytechnic Institute, uh, after the, the protests at the Polytechnic um, and so how like how are we then seeing, I guess, internally within Greece, this kind of, um, you know, this this the conservatives, fascists, whatever you want to call them, um, you know, using then this political opportunity to then also overturn a lot of the progress that then was made politically. Yes, there's, you know, as, as, as you mentioned, uh, a lot of people just simply went into politics, this and that and that, but there are a lot of unique things, at least the times I've been to Greece and have been in Athens, I do find a fervor that's kind of empty in Germany when it comes to like, you know, uh, for example, the, 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 the law that I mentioned regarding police on campus is, um, unheard of in Germany, especially after seeing the recent, um, um, you know, activists being removed by the police, uh, at, at the university that, that, that Yuli and I actually went to at, 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 at Freie Universität, where the police came, removed activists, pro-Palestinian activists in Greece. That is an unthinkable thing up until very recently having a police, on campus and yet this memory is continuously tarnished more and more and more by the conservatives um what other like what are other uh uh kind of things that we're witnessing within the modern kind of like greek um remembrance culture whatever you want to call or just like the modern greek 
zeitgeist regarding then also um how how this 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 remembrance culture is also just being kind of trampled on continuously at least to me it feels like that a bit looking at it outside uh, uh inward yes well you're right even that law that mr tyke is passed uh creating a university police force that was annulled in practice they never they were never dared enter the universities and even when they did uh they were confronted and then fled and then they had the normal police um effectively protecting the university police <laughs> which was a he <laughs> was laughable so in the end i think you know this is the probably one of the last victories of the movement of the 1970s student movement um it, it was a, it, it was a major victory but i very much fear that especially after the victory in the elections of last may and june the double elections that we had last summer of the mitsotakis government uh they are now determined the right wing along with the social democrats along with effectively the ruling class they're determined to get rid of the baby and the bath water what do i mean by this one of my abiding memories apart from the polytechnic as a very young person uh, was the miners strike in 1984 in britain the reason why i'm bringing it up is because in the late 60s and early 70s especially in the early 70s the national union of mine workers in the united kingdom dealt a major blow against the dead heath government back then effectively they brought it down uh, it was a magnificent victory by the working class by the organized trade union movement and then thatcher comes along and very smartly and very cynically she decides that she cannot defeat them she cannot confront the miners and beat them unless she throws the baby with the bath water unless she shuts down the num not the num sorry the mines so if you get rid of the so she she got rid of the steel industry in order to get rid of the trade unions of the steel industry she got rid of the mines in order to get rid of the national union of mine workers what this government is doing now having been defeated when it comes to the university police is to get rid of universities uh which <laughs> sounds extreme but and of course they will never admit to be doing this but bear with me for a moment because this is an interesting lesson for the left internationally uh what they're doing is this they are reducing substantially the number of students admitted to the system by increasing the cutoff point for admission So in a system which admits it used to admit 100,000 students a year 110,000 students a year um in the last year they reduced this by 40,000 so only only 60,000 will be admitted uh by essentially you know artificially increasing the uh, the, the, the base or you know the, the, the pass rate the pass mark for students and they are pushing them out towards private colleges that's one way of getting rid of the baby in the bathwater another way is by now establishing private universities and shifting resources from the public in, uh, uh, the public academic institutions to them now these private universities are going to be really terrible the lowest of the low but the greek bourgeoisie the greek aristocracy the big the you know the oligarchy here they don't give a damn because unlike the german one unlike the french or even the italian ruling class the greeks no longer send their kids to greek universities they've migrated their children to foreign universities almost completely almost you know 95% this is a very large number imagine if the german ruling class sent 95% of their children to china to the united states right <laughs> um then what why would the ministry of education support the german universities they wouldn't they would treat them like warehouses where they 
um, accumulate souls and you know, give them some skills to make them second-rate proletarians. So this is what they're doing there. This is the Thatcher strategy. You can't defeat the miners, you close down the mines. Here, you can't defeat the post-polytechnic students' uh, movement. Well, you shut down the universities. You convert them into warehouses and you, sh you ship out your own kids to universities abroad and the remainder can go to private colleges that are very, very low quality, but they pay money for it. So if you pay fees for it, then it's very hard for a kid whose family is paying, you know, 10,000, 5,000, whatever euros um, to, uh, to occupy the building. <laughs> They've paid money in order to be there, not to, to occupy the building. So, you know, the, the logic of neoliberalism combined with the ruthlessness of our dictators uh, is uh, succeeding. That all makes sense in a weird way. I mean, this has been a thing that I've noticed as well, that then especially just if you look at the sense of, of the you know, Greek ruling class, it is it is all people who have their degrees from elsewhere. You know, it is it is it is even um, it, it, I don't know. To me, it makes perfect sense that this has become much, much more of a norm amongst the Greek ruling class because it's kind of already established, if you will. I feel I think Mitsotakis is like a perfect example of this himself, who he went to school in the U.S., if I'm not mistaken, as well. Um, but nonetheless, um, uh, we're kind of, uh, you know, cut short on time here. But one question that then I wanted to ask, too, uh, is then this moment kind of, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of of our discussion, is that then to me, this kind of always served as a period of 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 a breath of fresh air amongst a lot of losses uh, uh, amongst the left at this time. We see then, you know, Chile, the rise of Pinochet. We see uh, the rise of neoliberalism in some of its most brutal forms that then come uh, after 1973, 1974. Um, what could then, I know this is a lot to ask, you know, in such a short amount of time, um, but what is then for 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 you, especially with like living through this moment, what is something that then that this moment can teach us to kind of keep us as progressives and leftists like to keep our head above water? Because it feels really suffocating right now. It feels really yes. daunting. And it, especially in Germany, where even, you know, saying things like from the river to the sea will get you in legal trouble um, there. Uh, uh, the, the, the power of the state is kind of amazing when you see it to this extent that a country that then says never again will then use every fascist bone in its body to make sure that then that you know they don't confront anti-semitism they don't confront you know um all you know, just 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 this plethora of, of horrible stuff and not just to mention that then the, the the cost of living crisis that we're currently in um you know we have we have two wars that then are going on that are you know very close to europe that we are, we're trying to pay attention to you know and try to like raise awareness of and this and that and that how how how, how do we do this how do we i i think that this moment kind of served as serves as 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 a good um moment like as, as as an example at least at least i've always kind of seen it in at historically as such uh, that then it's like the greek state kind of in its current state is by no means socialist or perfect or anything like that but there was a moment they grabbed it and they went with it and it's better than fascism you know <laughs> like it's it's better than a military junta you know um how do we how can we like like um offer some form of inspiration because i, I doing the show is kind of it's, it's hard sometimes because it's, it's, it sucks right now. And um, yeah. So what, so, what, so what how, bit of information? How can we, how can we I, I, get hope and keep yeah. hope? I guess it's what, how can we get us. hope? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, we need to create it. Hope doesn't exist. There's no such thing as hope. Anybody who has hope out of, you know, who, who experience hope at the moment is a fool. But hope is something we need to manufacture. And going back to the 17th of November, 1973, that eruption, which gave so much hope to so many people, not just in Greece, but outside, came out of nowhere. Uh, it came out of some people in the midst of the darkest hour of the bleakest night saying, I hope for nothing, but I'm going to make my own luck. And I'm going to occupy this building and I'm going to oppose the police and, you know, let them kill me. And then suddenly 
somebody joined them and another person and another person. And then out of that darkness, light came. Uh, so that's what we need to do. We must not expect hope to arrive at our doorstep. It will never arrive at our doorstep. We need to create it like we create the rest of our lives and to hell with it. I really appreciate that answer. And we have like two Me minutes too. left. So <laughs> that is perfect. perfect. Yeah. Um, Yanis Varoufakis, uh, thank you so much for coming on to the show, uh, for, for, you know, talking with us for the short amount of time that, that, that we all had. Um, I really appreciated it. I, 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 um, is there anything that you wish to shout out? I know they have a new book coming out. Uh, techno feudalism, <laughs> I believe is already out. If I'm not mistaken, it's already yeah. out. Yeah. Uh, you got anything it's, it's else you want to shout? Out? It's another bleak assessment of where we are. <laughs> <laughs> The purpose of which is to motivate us to do something about it. Because, you know, Jeff Bezos and um, Zuckerberg, they are in possession of a new kind of capital, which I call cloud capital. And that capital, unlike machines that produce other machines, that capital is machines modifying our behavior. So never before has it been more necessary for us to band together in order to influence behavior in a progressive direction. Sounds. Which, of course, means you never back in there. Once right. again, um, Janos Varoufakis, thank you so much for coming on. Hopefully we can much. have a longer conversation with you uh, uh, maybe next time that you're in Berlin. It's like negative 10 here, so I, I wouldn't recommend coming anytime soon. But um, thank you for coming on to the show. Well, and thank you so much. For we, um, thank you. Have, a, have a, a, a lovely and warm rest of your, of your evening, hopefully. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank Take you. Care. Bye bye. Bye.